What are the things that come into your mind when you hear the word rabies? Rage. Mad dog syndrome. Hydrophobia. These are the words that are most often correlated to rabies. Rabies actually came from the Latin word rabre, which means to rage or madness. And it may also have roots in the Sanskrit rabhas, which means to do violence. So what is rabies? Rabies is an acute, progressive, viral encephalomyelitis. This means that the rabies virus affects the central nervous system. This disease is contagious, and it affects all warm-blooded animals, including man, which makes it zoonotic. It principally affects carnivores and bats, although any mammal can be affected. But dogs are the main carrier and the most important reservoir of rabies. Once symptoms are present, the disease is fatal for both animals and humans. Rabies is found throughout the world, although few countries claim to be free from the disease through strict prophylactic measures. It is one of the most deadly zoonoses. Each year, it kills nearly 59,000 people worldwide, mostly children in developing countries. More than 95% of human cases of rabies are due to bites from infected dogs. These make rabies still a pervasive global threat. Rabies is caused by Lisa virus from the family Rhabdoviridae. The genus Lisa virus came from the Greek word Lisa, meaning frenzy or madness. In Greek mythology, Lisa was the goddess of rage, fury, rabies, and is known for driving mad the dogs of the hunter Actaeon, and causing them to kill their master. The Lisa virus is a bullet-shaped virus and are highly neurotropic, tending to attack or affect the nervous system preferentially. The virus is spread through the saliva of an infected animal and may enter the body through a bite and through direct contact, such as open wound or mucous membranes in the eyes, nose, or mouth. Aerosol transmission has also been documented, for example in high density, of rabid animals like bats and cave. Usually, saliva is infectious at the time clinical signs occur, but some may shed virus several days before the onset of clinical signs. The incubation period is extremely variable, ranging from one week to eight months. Most rabies cases in dogs develop within 21 to 80 days after exposure, but the incubation period may be shorter or considerably longer. As an example, there has been a recorded case of rabies in a person in the USA, which had an incubation period estimated reliably of greater than eight years. As mentioned earlier, Lisa viruses are highly neurotropic, meaning it attacks the nervous system. But how exactly? First, after muscle penetration, the virus enters the terminal axons and travels via the peripheral nerves to the spinal cord and ascends to the brain. The virus then travels via peripheral nerves to the salivary glands and thus the virus is shed intermittently in the saliva. Near the end of the clinical phase, after replication in the central nervous system, the virus may be found nearly in every innervated organ such as skin mucosal surfaces, gut, and most other organs. But hematogenous spread does not occur. The virus is shed in the saliva for about 10 days to 2 weeks before clinical signs appear. Once rabies virus is present, the clinical signs are rapidly progressive, and this causes acute behavioral changes and progressive paralysis. Behavioral changes may include sudden anorexia, difficulty swallowing, hypersalivation, signs of apprehension or nervousness, irritability, and hyperexcitability, including priaprism. The animal may seek solitude. Ataxia, altered phonation, and changes in temperament are also apparent. Uncharacteristic aggressiveness may develop, wherein a normally docile animal may suddenly become vicious. Signs usually occur within two to eight weeks. The clinical course is characterized by three stages. The prodromal stage, 
the excitative or furious stage, and the paralytic or dumb stage, which is also considered as the end stage. The prodromal stage is characterized by subtle changes in behavior, temperament, and has highly variable clinical signs. It lasts for approximately 1 to 3 days, or for an average of 36 hours. The next stage is the excitative or furious stage. It is also known as the classic mad dog syndrome, although it may be seen in all species. This is the stage where an aggression is pronounced, thus the term furious. During this stage, the animal may appear hyperreactive. They become irritable, and with the slightest provocation, may viciously and aggressively use its teeth, claws, horns, or hooves. Even noise may invite attack. Such animals lose caution and fear of people, and other animals. They frequently roam extensively, and attack unprovoked, or attack animate, and inanimate objects. They commonly swallow foreign objects like feces, straw, sticks, and stones. Rabbit dogs may chew the wire and frame of their cages, breaking their teeth. Animals may also experience dilation of pupils, disorientation, and as the disease progresses, muscular incoordination, and seizures are common. This excitative or furious stage lasts for approximately 1 to 7 days, and this form ultimately leads to the last stage, which is the paralytic, or dumb rabies. In this stage, behavioral changes are minimal, and the disease is manifested principally by paralysis. Animals experience an ascending paralysis of the hind limb, paralysis of throat and mass eater muscles, and also laryngeal and pharyngeal paralysis, which then results in change in voice, drooling or excessive salivation, dysphagia or inability to swallow, and dropping of lower jaw. Protrusion of the third eyelids is also evident. The paralysis progresses rapidly to all parts of the body, which then eventually leads to respiratory paralysis, coma, and death. This stage lasts approximately 2 to 4 days, and the animal may die within 7 days, from the onset of clinical signs. The three stages have variability of signs, and irregular lengths in every animal, and may even be completed, in less than one week. Diagnosis based on clinical signs, should not be relied on, when making public health decisions, because during the early stages, rabies can easily be confused with other diseases. Therefore, when rabies is suspected, and definitive diagnosis is required, laboratory confirmation is indicated. Suspect animals should be euthanized, and the head removed, for laboratory shipment. Diagnosis requires intact brain tissue, so avoiding injuring the brain, when euthanizing, is a must. The head samples should then be preserved, by refrigeration with ice, or cold packs. Rabies virus diagnosis, should only be done, by a qualified laboratory. Immunofluorescence microscopy, or direct fluorescent antibody testing or FAT, on fresh brain tissue, is the test of choice. It involves inserting a fluorescently labeled anti-rabies antibody molecules, into the brain tissue, which bind to the rabies virus antigens, and give off a bright glow when viewed through a special fluorescent microscope. The brain tissue samples needed in testing are the hippocampus, the cerebellum and the brain stem. The whole process of the test takes at most two days. No treatment currently exists. If suspected, exposed persons should immediately perform proper wound care. Bite wound should be thoroughly washed with soap and water, seek immediate medical care, or go to the nearest animal bite center, to receive a post-exposure prophylaxis. For the dog that has bitten, put them under observation for 14 days. If signs suggestive of rabies appear, notify your local government authorities. The animal will then be euthanized, and its head will be submitted to the diagnostic laboratory for testing. Rabies can be prevented through vaccination. In fact there is even a law regarding this which states that pet owners should have their dog regularly vaccinated against rabies once a year. Integrated Veterinary Management of Local Animal Populations by Mass Vaccination of Dogs and Community Promotion of Responsible Pet Ownership is the most cost-effective, humane, 
long-term solution towards eliminating canine rabies. Members of the public, owners of dogs and other animals, veterinarians, governments, we already know now, that rabies is indeed a devastating disease that affects us all. But, whoever and wherever we are, we can each contribute in our own way, to the global fight against rabies. Every year, on the 28th day of September, World Rabies Day happens. It is a day of action and awareness raising, wherein the community comes together, to promote the fight against rabies. It is a chance for every one of us, to have a role, because behind every pet or animal, there is a man, a woman, a child, and we all, can make a move.